Meeting is called to order. Welcome everybody. Friday, December 2nd, 2022. MSU Denver Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council. If council members could please put their attendance, they're present in the chat, that would be much appreciated. As usual, it was sent out early. And I hope everybody had a chance to look at it. So move to approve the agenda. Second. Is anybody opposed to the approval of the agenda? Hearing none. Okay, so on to reports. So co-chair updates. I just want to give a shout out to the hard work of the care center for the opening of Rowdy's Corner. It's fantastic. If any of you have not seen it, it's worth a look. Coffee machines, microwaves, it's very good feel, good energy, and just a really good job that um, was put put into that. And it's awesome for the students is to destigmatize the food insecurity that students may be experiencing. So with that, good work to everybody and good work on us for fighting food insecurity on the campus. And I do a good call. Thank you, Dan. Um, I just uh, want to say a few things. I, I want to echo the, um, you know, congratulations to the Roadrunner, uh, to now Rowdy's Corner, I had to stop myself from using the old name, uh, down at the bottom corner. I uh, spoke, I got the opportunity to speak from Miguel uh, about our participation in this whole project. I reiterated our continued support for the Roadrunner Food Pantry, or rather Rowdy's Corner now, and the whole project of addressing food insecurity on our campus. And uh, just reiterated our support there, um, represented us well. Mike was there, and Dan was there, uh, such and uh, Kenny. And so um, good presence, continuing that relationship with them. Um, I, I, I've heard really good things about the DACA teach-in, um, and I just wanted for a moment to say if anybody had attended, if you wanted to share any thoughts about the uh, about the experience, show that out there. And we'll continue, but um, I, 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 uh, I like I like the article I read about it, and it seems like it was really productive. Um, and I want to see more stuff like that, and so I. But um, aside from that, I wanted to speak about a couple of students who have come to our office and uh, brought issues to my attention. There was an MSU student who came into my office and told me about how their forensic major had been dropped by the university. And because of that, they're kind of caught in limbo of having to realign. But um, the real problem is that they've had um, they've had they've had to reschedule an ex or they've had to reschedule an access of three meetings with their advisor. Um, and this is their advisor telling them, hey, I can't actually meet on this day. Some of them are last minute. And this student mentioned having an accessibility accommodation that specified it needing to have meetings in person. And they're consistently offered these Teams meetings and then they don't actually get the meeting. And so I just kind of wanted to bring that a problem to our attention and maybe um, encourage some investigation into like, if there is a shortage of advisors, what we can do to like speak about that or address that. Um, and then there's another student who came to my office this morning. I've already spoken to some of you about it. Um, this is a student from CCD who was turned away when a group of uh, their friends and them went uh, to try and get into the drag bingo night being held in the Tivoli last Wednesday night uh, by the folks at CSU. Uh, it's, or sorry, at CU. It's my attention at the CU Denver um, event, uh, though I've been shown a poster that's not entirely clear about the exclusive nature of the event. I think given the like current context that we were living in in this state at this time, I think it was it comes off poorly that these students were excluded from this event. And I, I talked about um, seeing if we could get some sort of resource to this student in terms of because really what brought them into the office was who do I talk to about this, right? And so if anybody has an idea about that, about who we should have this student talk to about having these things addressed, I'm all ears, and I'd like to get that contact information to them speak in advance that. Um, Discussion or see the vendor address, and that's everything. Sorry for the longer uh, chair update, but I felt that that stuff was important. So, got it out. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Uh, the handbook committee. All right. You have a report, Paul. Yeah. So uh, the governing document committee this morning. Well, rather, not the governing documents committee. Sorry, I'm slow to adapt to change. Uh, the membership handbook committee has made some really good moves in the last two weeks. We've we've uh, fully revised four pages of the of the handbook that was Rhea and I working on it um, and our efforts have expanded further. We have, uh, I believe, three more members in addition to Rhea and myself taking on the assignments of two pages each to put in the changes that we've made already into our handbook so that the handbook reflects our constitution 
reflects the resolution we passed, reflects the pay we get and everything like that. And so there's good work to be done um, in the governing documents committee. And I, 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 I'm confident that if everybody gets their two pages out by next week, you know, we're, you know, we're either 80 to 90 percent complete and close to the finish line here. So good work in the governing documents committee. If anyone's interested in, um, you know, getting involved in that work or what exactly it looks like, I'm happy to talk to you uh, after the meeting. But that's everything we had in the report. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right. So if there's three big things to say, Cap. One is actually on the agenda today is our bylaws. So I will further on talk about that once we get to it. Secondly, um, SACAB is planning to have all three transitional people who are in charge of accessibility on three campuses. We're planning to come in here and discuss accessibility with all three of them, including the AAPAC um, equivalent. There's some third accessibility issues in our buildings and um, having all three together, we can voice our students' concerns about it. Um, thirdly, um, SACAB has approved a project from ASCP. Um, they plan on using, it's gonna cost about $50,000. They're gonna replace all public spacing lights. So these are fluorescents. These will all be replaced with LEDs, um, same in the atrium. Um, this won't this won't happen in like places of business, so the businesses will not get this fixed. But every office in this building will have brand new LED lights. Um, it's just so saving a lot of energy and a lot of money in the long term. So we're very happy to endorse and um, approve of that. Um, that will be taking place in January to March. So that's all three I have for sake. Thank you, Mike. Dave here. No, okay, we'll come back to Board of Trustee updates. Public Relations Committee. Chad, you have the floor. Awesome. Uh, PR committee met on Thursday, yesterday, uh, and we really hashed out a lot of the, the fine details of uh, Food for Finals event. Uh, that's on the 12th and the 13th. One of the things that came up is uh, every counselor needs to update their uh, availability to support that event. Yeah. Um, Monday, Tuesday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m or until we're completely out of supplies. Um, and yeah, but we also, uh, after reviewing the budget and doing more of this uh, this detailed work, um, we I would like to make a motion to increase the uh, the budget of the, uh, the Food for Finals Fund uh, by $500. We don't anticipate using it, but uh, there's some fine items that we need to get, like uh, napkins, gloves for like handing out food Cups, um, things like that that uh, that slipped through the cracks on our first uh, so first purchase. Chair sure recognizes the, the motion and the second. Anybody opposed? Going going twice. Okay, so through unanimous consent, five hundred dollars been increased. Got it. Um, and then one of the other things that uh, I need from everybody is uh, I'll resend the, the email and I'll put it in our chat as well. I still need photos from everybody um, or not everybody from a good portion of the council for a, a, a website as well. That's all I have. Thank you, Public Relations Committee. Their CSBC representative updates. There has not been a new meeting. I think that's next week or finals week. One of those two. And uh, we will update the uh, council at large when the updates are available. Re Policy Advisory Committee, you have the floor. We, hello everybody. We um, have, the last meeting was earlier this week and it was mainly still discussing the inclement weather policy. That has gone back and forth and now it's at a point where it's going out for um, the public review where they send it around different departments within the university for final approval. So it's taken a long time <laughs> and we're hoping it's finally going to get finalized in January before winter's over. But that was the main thrust of the meeting this past week. Thank you, Reed. Uh Mike, budget committee. The budget committee meets Monday. Uh, I have nothing to report. All right. Thank you, budget committee. Faculty Student Affairs Committee, Re, you have the floor again. Okay, um, we have met um, last week actually, and um, this was about really to talk about the community hour that Will had posed to all of us. And um, there was a, a bit of disagreement as to 
and understanding around it. So we're waiting on Will to meet with us again um, to explain more about it in detail because there was pushback from faculty members on that committee about it and how this is going to work around classes and um, like a, a, a line of continuity throughout the day for classes and what can be done with that time. That's all from them. If, right, like I said, you. I say this every time, but you guys, if there's anything we want to put to faculty, let me know because you know we can present to them. Thanks. I do actually have a question. Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Yeah. So, fact speaking of which, so um, Bree, do you mind yeah. sending me contact information for your faculty person? Because SACAP would actually like to speak to. We would like to have some faculty in on this um, transitional accessibility meeting we're having um, in the spring semester. I will send you her details right now. Awesome. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thanks, Re. Okay. Taylor, Sustainability Committee. Um, Mike, Amy, and I are meeting sometime next week, I believe, to go over some green purchasing agreement stuff. It'll be a continual thing forever. The green purchasing agreement. I, I think Felice has something to say. But other than that, we'll have to wait. Great. Thanks, Taylor. Mike. So, um, I finished the executive summary for the Green Purchasing Agreement through my role in CMEI. Um, we are planning to do a soft launch of the program this spring. Um, and with that, we are going to need to retake a look at the funds allocated to this program if we want this program to succeed. Um, but if everything goes well, then I will write the training for this program and it will be really ready to fully launch in the fall as a hard launch in the fall. And that's your capacity at CMEI? Yeah, that is through my uh, capacity at CMEI. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both. Alan, COVID response committee. Oh, no new updates. We'll meet again next week. All right. Thanks, Alan. Bree, travel committee. Give the floor. We um, have had two things to listen to this week and they were approved. Um, this young lady that we listened to yesterday um, is Oh, I'm trying to think of the scholarship that she receives. It's a full scholarship. And so she's going to a conference in Hawaii, an education conference, to be able to report back on the value of scholarships, along with three of her instructors and advisors to, to kind of talk about the value that it brings to students, minority students like hers. Fantastic. Thank you. Gabe, you got a student trustee update? No update. No update. No update. Thanks. Thank you. Under update. Okay. Um, Naomi, do you have an update on uh, the Indigenous Student Resource Committee? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, barely. I do not have an update for the Indigenous Resource Committee as right now. I'll probably start doing more work from in the spring semester. Right, thank you. Paul. Um, I just had a minor update I wanted to bring uh, that it would. That merits the uh, committee's attention. I think ICWA. the uh, ICWA or the Indian Child Welfare Act is still on the table, really on the chopping block yeah. in the current Supreme Court case, Rakim v. Uh, Holland, where they seek to, uh, the plaintiffs seek to overturn the uh, Indian Child Welfare Act, which has historically um, maintained that, uh, you know, indigenous people should have jurisdiction over their own communities okay. um, and over their own children. Uh, to prevent like the stealing away of children, you know, resident schools, that kind of continued uh, behavior. And so I uh, I just wanted to bring that back into the conversation. And I know uh, Naomi and I, we, we've talked about, and I don't know who else we've talked about, but we've talked about wanting to maybe try and activate like a, like a call to like legislatures, encouraging students to engage with uh, legislatures, uh, both at like a, uh, you know, uh, well, actually, at like a national level, to try and do something about this, um, and maybe if that's showing students how they can like easily reach out to their senators and uh, you know uh, Congress people, um, we can help give them the tools to do that and uh, and help you know uh, raise some attention to this issue and uh, see to that it is uh, protected. But yep, that's all I had on it. Maybe we could continue to talk about that as uh, the committee continues its work. Yeah, thanks, Indigenous Student Resource Committee. All right, so council goals updates. Does any counselors have any updates <laughs> on the five pillar of goals that we came up with at our retreat? Now's the time. Taylor. I just have a comment about this section of the agenda. I think um, 
maybe this should just be counselor updates. Sir, sure. can share anything they want to share since I don't think we've really added to our goals and another uh, mug. Okay. Anybody opposed to changing this from goals updates to just counselor updates in general? Going twice? Okay. Kenny, next week, have it as counselor updates. Cool. And now, awesome. Good work. Anybody have any updates? Counselors? Okay, Paul. This is a repeat of an old update, but it's because we, I, I, it should be on a, on a front burner, so to speak. But Sigi's Hub students are lacking a very major spot to organize and congregate and store their stuff. Um, the chess club, the, the dang chess club still stores explorers in our office. That's a kind of privilege that's not afforded to other clubs because we just don't have the space and the lockers. Uh, and like, um, and so I just encourage everybody to think creatively on how we might like find a space for student orgs to both store their stuff and also maybe meet and congregate. I'll build that community Will Simpkins is talking about in that community hour. But so yeah, see. So re I'll read yours. He has no updates, but is reminding everybody to call, apply to scholarships December 1st through March 1st. James. Uh, so something I've kind of been debating is, uh, you know, I hear from a lot of us here in the TSAC that we don't feel like our leadership, like MSC diverse leadership is really as connected with us as we want them to be. Um, so I was thinking of creating like a space kind of similar to how we have the president's cabinet meeting where our chairs go and speak with the best cabinet. What if we create like a space I know she's terribly busy, but maybe once a semester or once a year, at least for a presentation comes here and gives us like an update of the university, um, gives us the space to ask her questions. Um, that's something I'd be willing to contact her with and work on. If that's something that the future council would like to see happen in the future. Yeah. Maybe we should have her buy us dinner again. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, dinner. dinner. What are you talking about? We bought the we bought the dinner. Okay. Go ahead, Dr. Barone. We should buy it this time. Let's keep going. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that in the past, that has definitely happened. It didn't happen monthly, but it happened for sure every semester. Um, and we, I have not, they usually reached out to schedule that, but I can work on trying to get her here, especially. And then, yes, the dinner. Armando and I already talked about that, um, scheduling something for the spring. Um, and we were are trying to schedule it around the retreat. Kind of like we did this for the fall, like we had dinner together and then we spent the whole day together doing something similar and inviting Dr. Davidson and, and Dr. and Dr. Taylor. So working on it. Is there like a way I can work with you on that? Yeah. Try because I think it'd be also good to hear from like one of the student advocates. Yeah, I I don't work with her. I work with her executive assistant. Yeah. And make it happen, but you're more than happy to. Be. So more I guess I'll. I want to pose the uh, kind of a question then, because I feel like there's unity on this, though. I want to be sure. Um, all right. Do, is anyone opposed to like working to set this up? Uh, uh, once a semester, we we try and get Davidson in here so we can, you know, hear from and speak to uh, President Davidson about that. Is everyone completely united on, on making this happen? Anybody opposed or want to talk about? I'm not opposed. I do have a comment to them. Any purchases that this council makes in that retreat or that dinner should be approved by this council because that was not made done. That was not oh, made clear last time. Yeah, also that we paid for it, but we didn't. Yes, not, yeah. the council did not approve that. Yeah, and, um, yeah. We should definitely make sure that's accounted for. So, because that's an Armando thing, probably. Yeah. Um, or yeah okay. Without bringing that up, because there's some purchases that are getting slipped by this council that we don't know about. Mm. So, I'm um, just putting that comment out there, but I don't. I think it's fine. I think I, I have no issues with it. So, hey, you raise a really good point, Mike. Anybody else want to say something about it or have any thoughts? Or are we united on the support of this? I think it's a really good idea. Sounds oh, wonderful. Sounds wonderful. Cool. We believe in democracy around here. All right. Okay. Um, Wait. Okay. 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 In addition. Yeah, please. It's different. Okay. Also, I don't know if if y'all got uh, Dr. Elizabeth Carmelli's email. Figure that out. Survey, really important, kind of get really good data. Yeah. Voter engagement, the engagement stuff. All Anybody right, else? so hearing the opposition, we'll move forward with that, James, and I'm happy to help in whatever capacity I might be able to, if you want, if you want or need it. So, all right. Thanks, Gabe, for that reminder. Thanks, Paul. Advisor updates, you have the floor. Yeah. 
Um, I guess the biggest one, I just wanted to say thank you to Paul and Mike um, and some others who attended the um, grand opening yeah. of Rowdy's Corner. We received a lot of press and a lot of uh, media and a lot of exciting outreach from community partners and just wanted to say thank you for all of the support. And I've not seen the traffic because I've been mostly in JSSB all week, but I can, I just from the excitement and enthusiasm that night, and I've seen the news, mm -hmm. almost, I think on Channel 7, it was on there, um, that it, it was just really exciting to see um, usage and students really accessing that space and just so excited about it. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you to everyone um, for your support in that. And I also just wanted to share that we, um, through the Center for Equity and Student Achievement last year, we matched a donation of TSAC, what was it Taylor? $1,200 or something that you all gave. That's what our, our budget said. And so we matched that last year, but this year we couldn't do 10,000 because that's a lot of money on my budget, but um, we did contribute 2,000 this year to help with the food pantry. So out of the Center for Equity and Human Achievement. So I just wanted to offer that too. We gave 2,000. Yeah. So. Um, and I know that there are other there that was a big fundraising campaign on Tuesday because it was the Roadrunner Day of Giving. And I spoke to folks from the foundation and they said that the donations that were coming in, that that's the most donations they've ever that we've ever had. So just a lot of good good vibes. Thank you. It's working. That's it. Um, and just the retreat, but I already we talked about. Okay. Thank you, Dr. All right. Mm -hmm. On to no old business, new business. Dr. Simpkins is at 305. That's 14 minutes. We'll move on to uh, <laughs> move on to Mike. Say cap bylaws. Yes, we'll do that first. Did anyone opposed to doing C first? Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Sorry. I do have one more thing since we're 14 minutes ahead of time. I was trying to be quick. Um, for those of you who attended the student leader sessions with our uh, candidates for the APPD student permanent position, the one that I'm in internally temporarily right now, um, please, please, please give your feedback um, to whoever, Katie, or turn it in at the help desk in JSSP. Um, we are going to make a decision on that individual really soon. So like next week. So your feedback is super important. And I hope there's a place on there that says that you're a student um, because I just want you to know your voice matters a lot. So and or also tell me what you think. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Yeah. OK, so is anyone opposed to what well, we I heard a second did a CCAP, a CCAP. Yeah, C. pursuing C first as an item that we could finish in time to uh, go into A. You know, opposed to hearing Hearing none, Mike. Oh, thank you. So this has been a labor of love, but I'm glad we finally gotten this through. So um, me, Sam Cole, um, Cody Phelps, and um, Skip Spear, um, that's the committee in charge of our bylaws. So the SICAP bylaws are 12, we're 12 years old. At the beginning of the semester, um, we found them very inaccessible. Um, they had a lot of strict requirements there, like you had to be a two-year resident, you had to have a certain GPA. Um, so we came in and um, we completely changed the bylaws. Over the course of this semester, we've met every week and um, we've had legal counsel there. So um, I've been excited to present to you this finished product. Um, the, fir the first draft or the bylaws before this were about 12 pages. It's about five pages. Are you going to read it? No. Okay, good. It's been sent out weeks in advance. If anyone, so I'm, this, what I'm asking for today is approval. And I'll go over some kind of key things I think are worth the public, worth knowing what's in here. But um, I'm asking for approval. Any amendments to this, I cannot make any. So we are doing a amendment voterama kind of thing. The week SACAC gets back in session after winter break, that whole meeting is dedicated to amendments brought from SGAs. They either get voted up by the council or voted down by the council. And then it gets passed, it will get passed that day and sent on to the board to be approved for the week of that. So let's just go in through it. Let's go just few things that um, I want to point out um, that I find important. Uh, the first one um, I want to say is um, first thing is to our committees. So um, can you scroll down to our committees, please? 
Four pages is even better. Most of this is generally the same, but it's also broader, so it gives us more authority. So, um, but our first thing for committees um, is this policy subcommittee. AHEC plans to redo or start a committee to rewrite all of its policies in the next few years. And this is going to be a standing committee that is required to be filled every year. Um, it's going to be required to be filled by the ABOD rep. So that's the that is the um, council person who sits on the board of directors for AHEC. So I'm very proud to kind of put this committee forward. Um, we all agree that it's very important that students should have a voice in the policies going into AHEC. So um, that's one. The second one I want to, you can kind of see it, is the Student Affairs Committee. This is going to be the committee responsible for moves in the Tivoli. Anything student affair related, anything that student fee money goes to, we're going to be responsible for um, not maintain necessarily, but like have a voice on and be like, hey, this is our student funds. We should have a voice on where it goes, sort of thing. That's not was not there before either. Um, and those are the and uh, the only third thing I can think of is just requirements. We've stripped requirements for state cab members. So that was probably at least for CCD. CCD has a lot of people from out of state um, uh, who do not have that residency requirements. Um, GPA requirements and slash as well. So um, that there's a two catch hold there though. Um, though we as state cab do not require it, SGAs can have their own sets of requirements for state cab that is written to their election code. Um, into our constitution, I made sure there is no requirements for us currently, and that will be written in our election code as well. So state cab will have the same amount of requirements if we choose like to be any other position on the council. Mm -hmm. So um, this period, um, it's, got, it's in the process of being approved by UCD and CCD. Um, I am confident it will be approved soon. Um, that these are the bylaws. So that's what I have. Thanks, Mike. So. Yeah. So are we voting on it? Yes, I w I'm looking I'm looking for approval of these bylaws, app approval to move on. So you, Taylor, Taylor, go ahead. I just want to compliment you. These are so much better. When I was on state cap, our bylaws they truly were very bad. Um, I do have one thing. Go ahead. Uh, it's I will approve them either way because I think they're better. Go ahead. Um. In section 3.02, it says the chairperson has the ability to call a special meeting when it takes, but then there's three, it, it requires three other people to agree to have that same power. Um, I'm all about flat and structure. I think that should be amended so anyone has that power. But those are my thoughts because I agree with the flat and structure, and that's kind of just goes along with the key tax goal thing. Yes. So um, if you want, I can take that to that. The, that space where we're going to vote it up or down. Um, yeah. What I say to that is, um, though we have a flat structure, mm -hmm. two SGAs do not have a flat structure on this campus. I realize that. So, um, and this is a board, so this is the same power that the chairperson of the ABOT board has <laughs> as well. Um, so I'd say that, but I mean, I'm glad to, if you write kind of the change for yeah. me, I would be glad to take that there and see what they think. Okay. So I have no issues with that. There so, is. I just want to say a quick point of order while we, because we're going to pursue business, so we'll have like a lot of discussion. Um, I'll be keeping stack over here, and so please wave at me. Make sure I like, you know, I give you like a thumbs up or something. Make sure you're in. And I'm watching the chat here too. I'll make sure if you ask a question in Mike or the person who's proposing the amendment, we give time for the person you're asking the question to respond. If you have like a direct response or something, let me know, and I can try and work you up in the stack. We'll take a progressive stack as we've said before. Yes. Take a minute. So did you motion to get this? Um, yeah, or um, I'm looking for an approval, so um, I motion us to approve of these new bylaws. All right, the chair recognizes the motion to approve these. There's a second, and it's recognized. Anybody opposed? All right, let's vote. Alan? Yes. Dad? Yes. Alex? Taylor? Yes. Uh, yes. Alex, yes. Okay, Paul? Yes. James? Yes. Mike? Yes. Bree? Aye. Dan? Yes. Naomi? Gabe? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, it passes. Thanks for the approval. Good work, Thank, good work Mike. All right. Hold um, on. My motion, we take a, a, a short recess five minute recess second i second that cool. all right motion on the floor is to take a short five minute recess for dr simpson simpkins gets here anybody uh, opposed anyone opposed
How many of those? There we go.
Call the order. We have our presenter or Dr. Will Simpkins. Yeah, has the floor. Yes, that's it. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, everybody ready for the end of the semester? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a nice break? Oh, yeah. Did you actually take a break? No, nope. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> okay. turn off the email. Okay. Um, so what I, I, I know, um, thanks for giving me time and space. Um, I actually really appreciate our regular visits and, and I'm glad that you all worked with us to make it a priority this year. We'll keep it going. Um, I thought, uh, I know you all wanted to talk about the community hour survey and sort of where we are in that process. Um, and then the Colorado Springs shooting university response. Um, and then I thought I would just give you an update on some of the high level things that I'm either working on or that we're, we're talking about. Um, but I'd like to start with the university response um, to the to the shooting and just ask you, you know, what's on your mind and what information can I be most helpful providing um, on that topic? I, I spoke earlier about a student that had come in my office this morning with uh, the CCD student with a concern and having been excluded. Uh, a group of CCD students who tried to get into the drag and go night that they had last Wednesday, put on by CU Denver. I understand the CU Denver exclusive event, or at least that was the reason for turning them away. But from the signs that I saw, from the signs that this student showed me that they had taken a picture of, the exclusive nature of the event wasn't terribly clear. And even if that's like, even if it seems justified or something, what we have in reality is an instance of, of exclusion of, um, you know, of, like, uh, members of like a queer community on our campus in the wake of that shooting. And so um, it, it, it's uh, the student asked me, you know, the first question that came from my office was like, where do I go when I have an issue like this? And I was like, well, what kind of issue do you have exactly? I said, you know, and you don't have to tell me everything, you know, but they, they explained what I just explained. And um, so I, I, I raised the issue with everyone else here and uh, encourage everyone to think creatively on like, you know, what kind of resources can we direct this student towards and what can we do to kind of like elevate this issue? But, um, that's one thing. I don't have much else more specifically to the shooting, but that's just something I forgot to take. So. Um, how is the university? I know we kind of talked about it in our student advisory. But how is the university continuing to ensure uh, students like safety and protection mm -hmm. um, and how it's also looking at as well? Especially, yeah, in our. Today's um, before I talk, anybody want to add? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, as someone who's part of the queer community, um, I like to say, I mean, just from my perspective, people I've talked to in my circles, I mean, it's kind of weird. How, how are we supposed to feel? I mean, we've been through this many times. I mean, it's 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 in the nature of this community, like there's lots of hate thrown at us at a day to day basis, and there's lots of violent rhetoric, especially right now in the news. Um, from, from our lawmakers and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I'm at a place where I'm like, I don't want to be like stone cold to the content, but like, how how should we feel? Should we, I mean, we, yeah. there's like a sense of hopelessness there. You know what, I appreciate you sharing. I, I'm um, a little bit in the same spot, right? Um, I wrote a, an email to the student affairs uh, division and I do these like Monday message things and I will um, put them on LinkedIn. And so if you're interested in reading it, it's on my LinkedIn page. Um, you're welcome to, to find it. But I had these feelings of like um, that Sunday morning, you know, talking to Cynthia on the phone. I woke Cynthia up. Um, okay. uh, and Cynthia woke Gabe up. I, I, I knew Gabe lived in Colorado Springs and I was freaked out. Um, I was furious. Because um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different response results, right? Um, and I was even more furious when the article came out that the El Paso County Sheriff's Department, or maybe the Colorado Springs Department, in the two years since we've had the red flag law, have done it twice out of 690 some total. Colorado usages of the one law that we have passed that was supposed to be a measure of protection, right? So there was the fury over inaction. And I think the that sadness 
that um, the rhetoric that is in our world right now, we are now seeing the actions that are being inspired by that rhetoric. We're seeing it in the attacks on the trans community. We've seen it for a long time on the attacks on the black community. Um, it is happening over and over and over. Um, and so that has been deeply sad for, for our communities. But the thing that like is always in the back of my head is it could have been me, yeah. right? It could have been me. I could have been at that club that night. Like lots of times in my life, I've been like, let's drive two hours and go to a gay bar that like, it also could have been me because that was the town when I was a college student, we drove an hour, we had to drive an hour um, to get to the small town gay bar in the town of, you know, 100,000 people um, that I, from hearing about it, was sort of like Club Q. Um, so, uh, I thank you. I can't give you an answer other than to say, I, I feel you, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there really is an answer than yeah. whether it's already kind of obvious, but everyone kind of knows it. I mean, the next day is my sister's birthday and my mom could not stop staring at me throughout that entire yeah. like I have a my mom she's always fearful what happens to her children yeah. she's from Mexico so they can come from some there's some kind of fear there but she she's she was terrified the next day so I'm like you, you, and I don't know how to respond to that I was like yeah when I came out of the closet 20 uh, age yourself there <laughs> um yeah um <laughs> I, I remember my my own parents, my friends' parents saying things like, we want you to be safe and we're worried about you. They were talking about HIV, right? Just in the mid-90s, the late 90s. Now, they're talking about shootings and physical safety. Um, and and it's, it's not just about the queer community. I, I think there are lots of communities that are targeted. Um, let me let me walk you through sort of when something happens in our community, in our world, how the university, what what the behind the scenes looks like. Um, so that you can know also how to influence and and talk. So um, I'll use I'll use this one. Um, so typically we find out something has happened. Um, and for me, the first call is always to the dean of students. Because if it's a shooting, um, when we start hearing names, we have to check the student records, see if anybody who's been impacted that we know of. Um, someone is also doing that on the faculty staff um, side. Same with the Boulder shooting, um, the Aurora Theater shooting. As the names become public, we, we try to triangulate and see um, what we can do. Sometimes we start getting reports from faculty, staff, other students of impacted members of the community, right? So before a name is public, oh, I think so and so. Um, so that level one is just making sure the community is okay. Level two is then an almost concurrent and immediate, typically Cynthia, um, working with her team to make sure that we are providing spaces for our community to grieve, process, ask questions, feel supported. Um, sometimes it makes sense that like the LGBT Center would run it, sometimes it's the Counseling Center, sometimes it's CMEI, it just depends on who we think is best positioned to respond um, to the needs of the community. Um, then uh, we start talking with the consoles. That's like number three, but it's this is all in the first hour, um, the university comms hoax. Um, that is to, if there's going to be any questions that come in from the media, we need to have good information on, on what to do. Um, in this case, Flower Springs, you may have caught that there was an initial um, article in The Guardian that identified the shooter as a student at MSP, um, which was not true. Wow. Uh, and so we needed to correct that really quickly. Uh, and working with, I mean, our comps folks were working with The Guardian, CNN. Um, once the national media started descending on Colorado, right? And it was a, a database that had inaccurate information that we don't know where the information came from, um, but that's what it was. Um, then uh, 
this was a Sunday. And so many of us started talking about what kind of response should the university do our students need to care for us is essentially the, the question. In this case, it was a no brainer because it was literally our community that was impacted, right? Same with Boulder. Um, the University of Virginia shooting was a different matter because it didn't directly impact our community, but it was so adjacent because it was a college community. You could imagine yourself on that bus coming home from a field trip, right? And so there's always that, how, how closely connected does the president um, respond? If it's not the president, who is it? Um, for better or worse right now, most of the messages that are going to go out to you are going to come from the president because that's the sort of culture that we've inherited. But we're talking a lot about is that actually the way it should be because we want to save her voice for the really big stuff right um, we also want students to know that there are lots of people here who support them not just the president so we'll be coming back to you to talk about that at some point um, and then we put out the statement and and so always open to feedback as we go through through there will be more crises more emergencies we'd love to have your feedback I just got the time thing, so I'm going to pivot over to community hour. Um, I've got the initial results from our poll survey, but they are not disaggregated yet. And so I'm going to give you some broad numbers, but just know that I'm still digging into the data a little bit to do the cross referencing. So we had over a thousand students um, respond, which I think is actually really good, yeah. considering that we only put it in the runner and on Canvas and didn't really do any other advertisement. Um, got over a thousand students responding. Um, 1,326. Um, well, maybe I'm not. Um, so, um, looks like of, of the students that responded, over 100 are student parents, um, about 250 work full time, almost 300 part time. Um, most students prefer to take classes in the morning, followed by the afternoon followed far behind um, with evening classes at the 4 p.m. Um, so then we asked the question, we basically sort of described it and said, are you in favor, are you not in favor, or do you not have an opinion? 42% um, or 328 students said they were in favor. Um, 202 students or 25, 26% said they were not in favor. Uh, and then 248 or about 32% said they were, um, they didn't have an opinion. So 778 overall. Um, so then what I did, you could sort of see my notes is I went through the many, many, many comments and just sort of coded them as, is this a, a overall positive and overall negative or maybe somebody who sees both sides and you know, wanna say it. Um, what we're doing now is going through and disaggregating what did our student parents say? What did students who are working full time say so that we can look for dis uh, disparate impact of policy? So no decisions have been made. Uh, I'm still meeting with a couple of other shared governance organizations to get their feedback. We'll likely take this to senior staff the second. Uh, not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after if that makes sense. Great. Other high level stuff that we're talking about right now, we're of course hiring Dina students. And so thank you all for showing up to those interviews. It's been really great to have you meeting with them. Um, at the end of, we got our last interviewer on, or interviewee on Monday. After it's all said and done, um, if you've seen multiple candidates, feel free to shoot me an email with your thoughts about, I never like ranking like the candidates, but it, like if there's just like, a, I really enjoyed this one, think I could work with them, didn't like these two, don't wanna work with them. And this one, I can take it or leave it, right? Would love, would love that feedback. We're talking a lot about student communications right now. I do not think we communicate with students well, period. Uh, and so this is the year that I wanna start doing something different or at least planning on a process to get us somewhere different. Um, and uh, enrollment is still a concern. So registration's looking really good right now, really good in that we're only 4% down. Um, last week we were 7% down. And so it, it's showing me that we're starting to do that rebound. Uh, and I'm excited about that. Um, and we're going to continue to flex around events and communications for new students, but really leaning in on how can we help continuing students, you know, get registered and take the right classes. Um, and you'll start to see some good stuff happening in advising. 
that's mostly on the academic side, but we're working toward a reality where I think in the next year or two, you'll be able to go into your account and it will tell you to stay on track here are the next five classes you should take. Nice. Cool. Yeah. So and I, my hunch tells me that will eliminate about 65 to 70 percent of the advising that students ask for. Because my gut tells me at the time you're just wondering what class to take to stay. So um, Provost is working on that. Um, if you have not had an update from Provost Tatum, I would encourage you to. He is working on like a dozen policy changes, eliminating the minor requirement, um, finding out why students are graduating with more than 120 credits and doing whatever he can to make that not the case. Um, looking at the faculty workload proposal. So there's a lot going on in academic affairs that I think you would find exciting and also the feedback would be great. Cool. A good idea to have to put a in here. It's okay. Yeah. I think. All right, we can request that. Do you have any thoughts? I agree with having a public state come. Uh, he came to City Government PSAC um, last year to talk about the minor requirement a lot. So I would like to see how, like, what's new about that. Okay. Yeah. I like Provost Tatum. He's got good tweets. True. <laughs> but um, thank you. Uh, I hope so. Thanks for taking the time out of your uh, out of your busy, busy day. I'm sure. Uh, I I yeah. I think I can speak for this as council. I'm excited about the work that you've done. Cool. Thank you. Have a great weekend. That's most okay. important. Oh, last. Uh, I will be convening a group to look at the holiday and fall break schedule starting in 2023. I think I've mentioned that in the past. So just keep watching for more information. Quick thing. Side note. Uh, today, the candidate that we interviewed there was asked, "How can students?" Get the voice of the leadership at her at the school, and she says, "Why aren't they having it here?" So that was like a shock, shock to her. So just to go off of the communication to the students, but it's a good candidate. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank cool. you again. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, all right. So we're gonna move to be. This is. The floor to the accountability committee chair. Yeah, you floor. Yeah. Cool. Um, can I take control of the uh, screen, please? All right. Um, I should also take this document everybody as well. Second. I apologize, I'm not prepared. Hey, okay, Chad. This is the moment. We're ahead of schedule anyway. How dare you? Anybody see any good movies lately? Oh. <laughs> that pandemonium. But yes. What about a panda? No, Star Wars is better. What? Crack that can open. Hey, that's a good one too. I forgot, like this microphone's very sensitive. So they can't really. Oh, we're gonna can't just. Oh, oh, oh. Well, they're part of the. You know, uh, conversation. Yeah, they did. I, they did. I need to get help for your addiction. Do we need to talk about your Red Bull addiction? Just started drinking Red Bulls. So oh, let's keep it in. literally. We're just doing a little technical thing. All right. Cool. All right, I, I hope everybody had time to review some of the documents, all, some if not all of the documents that I shared. That was uh, that content is what the accountability committee, which was made up of myself, James, Dan, uh, Mike and Gabe. Um, that was what we used as the uh, the content of the, uh, the recommendations and the, the findings. Um, so. I mean, I, I'm going to read this out. This is basically just how I was like formulating my thoughts. The accountability has reviewed the documents that were shared with the council. These documents make up the content that was found in response to the motion form to make the accountability committee. Uh, the committee has concluded that recommendations for the council's action are appropriate. Um, the summation of the findings are as follows. Uh, Mr. Alan Williams has shown a general lack of disrespect for his fellow, fellow counselors as seen in a tone. Uh, tone of the verbiage used. 
While he is free to share his opinions, these opinions should be delivered with a level of tact and respect uh, deserved by all members of the council. The chosen delivery of these opinions has led to a breach of the student, student code of conduct, Article 3, Sections A and B, um, which they are in this document. I don't want to have to read this. It's basically just A is verbal abuse, threats, intimidation, coercion, uh, or, or any unwelcome conduct by individuals. And then B is bias motivated um, incidents, including behavior, speech, and expression that is motivated by bias, prejudice based on perceived race, such on so forth. Um, the committee also feels it is inappropriate for Allen to attack and throw blame at, uh, at a student of MSU Denver um, without the evidence to support his claim, as seen in the document uh, 11 2 main chat and uh, email traffic chat out um so please please oh please 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 open this document and read these recommendations because i do not want to have to read all of them i will read the first one um and it will give an idea of how um so recommendations for the council um based while we were working in, in, in the accountability committee we uh um recognized that the, the council does not have a chat moderator. I don't know if it's something that the co-chairs would need to uh, appoint somebody at each meeting to say, like, you're, you're going to be the monitoring the chat. You'll be the one with the ability to delete any, any messages that are uh, inappropriate, things like that. Because right now we don't have that, and any member in the council or from the public could at any time just add heinous things to the, the chat. Um, okay, and then recommendations for the council. For Mr. Allen Williams, all recommendations come with a time frame of end of February for the member to complete all the items that are voted upon uh, in the recommendation. Should the member fail to complete all aspects of the recommendations in the allotted time, the member will be removed from the council. And we set this time frame uh, up with uh, respect for December. In January, where the majority of uh, of those months school is not going to be in session. Cool. Recommendation one: How this is going to work is um, no, Naomi. They are not. I'll explain this in just a second. Um, how these recommendations work? I rec we noticed that in the resolution twenty two dash five, um, it states that. There, a recommendation will be put forth to the council, but we also recognized if we only put forth one recommendation and the council deems that recommendation inappropriate, but they still want action, then there's only one recommendation that gets voted down on and then nothing is addressed. Nothing is nothing happens. Nothing moves forward. So how this works is this is a tiered um, recommendation system, one being one having the most um, consequences and uh, five being um, the council will not seek any action and the accountability committee will be immediately dissolved. So recommendation one, the counselor will be required to attend courses put on by the Gender Institute for Teaching and Advocacy, GITA. The courses, uh, the courses to be completed will be decolonizing professionalism, microaggressions, and implicit bias. Additionally, Allen will be required to apologize to the former members of the council for creating the, ho the hostile uh, environment created by his actions. I'm sorry you were offended by what I said or any variation of this meaning will be considered unacceptable. Allen will not have the power to vote on motions, resolutions, or amendments until these items have been completed. And then recommendation two um, peels back some of these uh, I'll just read all of it at this point, halfway through it. I think it makes sense. The res, uh, uh, recommendation two, the counselor will be required to attend courses put on by GITA. The courses to be completed will be microaggressions and implicit bias. Additionally, uh, Alan will be required to apologize uh, to the former members. Um, Alan will not have power to vote on motions, resolutions, and amendments. So the only thing that changed in this one is one of the courses has been removed. Um, Recommendation three, uh, this council will be required to attend courses put on by GITA. The course that to be completed will be microaggressions. Additionally, the apology 
and Alan will not have the power to vote on motions, resolutions, or amendments until these items have been completed. Number four, Alan will be required to apologize to former members of the council for creating a hostile work environment, and Alan will not have the power to vote on any amendments until the items have been completed. And then number five, um, uh, the council will, will not seek any actions. The accountability committee will be immediately dissolved. Um, and so we will go into some discussion as far as any points of clarity that need to be made. Um, this is not a row session of Mr. Williams and no personal attacks should be should be brought up at this point for whatever reason or any reason at all. Um, additionally, if there is if there is additional content that was not considered, um, a motion can be made to extend the time frame for us as well. Are there any clarifying questions that we have? Yeah, are we going to vote on this? Are we just going to say number five? Yes, 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 no, 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 and then go down. If it doesn't pass, go to number four, then number three. So we will vote for, on number one first. That's number why one. I wanted everybody. Oh, that's what I meant, number one. Yeah. Yes. Um, I seem to remember uh, there being like some part of the document or the accountability structure that would give Alan a moment to like. Yes. Oh, uh, I, I do apologize on that. Yes. Well, I just want to make sure we have. Yeah, that. we have that. It's protected institutions. Yes. Um, I just thought there's a talk about voting. I'm like. So we're not we're not going to vote yet. We are going into clarifying yeah. um, questions, and so, then Alan has a has a chance to uh, to respond prior to our voting. Any clarifiers? Online, do we have any clarifying questions on any of the actions or the work of the accountability committee? Nope, I think that was very well written out. Uh, thank you, Chad. Love your work. Thank you, Naomi. Um, going twice. All right, Chad, take it away. Let me ask. Uh, Alan, Alan uh, if you would like to use the space here. No, I have nothing to say. Word back to you there, Chad. Uh, so, uh, vote on number one. Oh, before we do that, uh, we're, I think we opened it up to, um, you know, we have points of, points of clarification, discussion. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're not going to, we're just going to vote on it, not discuss it? No, no, yeah, we're not going to discuss well, it. Well, there's, Discuss what Alan's behavior? No. I, no, I will discuss the work, the recommendations, the, the item that we're voting on. Right. I think he's asking you, are we gonna before we just vote on it? Are we gonna discuss? Should I at least vote? have the time yeah. to discuss. If no one has anything to say, that's fine. We can move on from there. But I'm gonna vote. But yes, we can. We can. Say. I just think there's a right and Robert's rules for everybody to have a moment to discuss before we move to a vote. I just want to make sure we recognize that there, there is a hand about. Yes, we'll make a motion to open up on there. There's a hand in the chat real quick. Yes. Before you make that motion. The, uh, the hand was up. God, if I can see whose hand is. Mike, 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 just a second. Alex, go ahead. Sorry, I'm on my phone. Can you come I, um, <laughs> while I agree with all of this, I wonder if the power to vote is something we should strike. The power to vote. What do you mean by that, Alex? He's saying that... Um, the, in all of the recommendations, or most of them, uh, Alan will not have the power to vote on motions, resolutions, or amendments. Okay. That he's suggesting that, we strike that. Is sure. that fair, Alex? Fair, like, sure. rephrasing? Yeah, that is what I'm saying. Okay. On the, yeah. on the Go ahead, Mike. part. Yep. So I believe the reasoning for that is we cannot um, pause pay for any counselors. So the most immediate thought when I had this is like, oh, we suspend pay until these things are done. But that is just not within our ability, the accounting department. I mean, if we're sending pay, it's for all the counts. So um, that's the reasoning why that's been added into that. I, in, uh, yes. Oh, I see, Alex, is your hand, is a new hand, Alex? It is. I, while I don't agree with what Alan has said, and I agree with everything in this document, I do feel that striking someone's power to vote as an elected council member is undemocratic. Uh, all right, so we had Dan, so go ahead, Dan. Well, my suggestion would be, Alex, to just vote down one, two, three, four, and vote for five, because five doesn't give him the loss of vote. Does anyone have any additional thoughts? James, please. So I'm just more clarifying. The reason we did this was because, you know, we, we need to ensure that there is, you know, a reason for you know 
a member who faces any sort of accountability action, you know, does it. This wasn't so just to say like, okay, we want to take away people's rights to vote. It's like we couldn't, like, like I said, we couldn't suspend pay. So we need to have some sort of incentive as to why should I even care to whatever action is voted on by the by the council at large. All right. Yeah, Naomi. Oh, thank you, Chad. Naomi. Yeah. So, I mean. I get where Alex, I get where you're coming from because he is still a council member, but like the reason why I think that the consequence of not being able to vote and things like that is so vitally important until after he gets his stuff done is that he needs to have a formal sense of where he needs to address how he, I'm sorry, not where, how he needs to address his opinions when representing himself um, on these councils. And if he's doing that, then that's all by all, means, of course, represent your own opinion, but he needs to be able to do it in a manner that is both respectful and effective for him. And he has shown multiple times over and over again, according to this, that he is not capable of that. We're, we're, we're not going to roast, roast. We're not going to roast Alan right now. We're just no, simply no, no, talking hey, at, hey, all. at all. No, 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 we're not. You're, talk, we're not you're talking anything. about Alan's behavior. I'm not talking about the behavior. I'm stating what has been called out in the resolution. And you guys need to stop interrupting when someone is talking. That is not okay. If it's I, on the border, we're going to call I, it out. I understand that that's on the border, but you still need to respect what someone is saying because I am not talking derogatory about them. I'm simply stating the behaviors that are being addressed. That is it. I am not calling him out of his oh. name or saying anything that is offensive in any kind of terms. I'm just stating what the problems are about. So I'm saying that because of those problems being brought up, this is why we are asking that they are putting having a hold put on his avail availability ability sorry, to vote. Because if he has, if he doesn't have the capacity to be respectful, then that shouldn't be considered a valid vote because it's not showing fairness to the rest of the student body. That was my point. And yeah, you can take what you want from that. So before, thank you. Before we get you down, I was going to ask Alex, do you have a direct response to that? Are you okay? If I, I, go? I do. Okay. I, I mean, yeah, Dan can go. That's and fine. if anyone else wants into the stack, please raise your hand, and I can write you in. I mean, we have five minutes. I was just going to give a quick hypothetical, Alex. Just well, the reason we want to prioritize the direct response is so that he said I could go. Okay. Oh, he said I could go. Okay, then go. Sorry. So simply, if somebody say they get number number one, which is the most severe, and they just, they have an individual has to go to classes and all these things, and they just drag their feet, and they don't go and they don't do anything like that, then eventually they essentially then the. The point of the accountability committee is pointless because they can just drag their feet. They still get a vote. They still get paid. And then at the end of the year, they're no longer going to run again. And they just have the exact same voting power and everything. And the whole point of the accountability committee was was pointless. So I think that was the thinking of the accountability on that, Alex, just to clarify in that hypothetical. All right. And so, Chad, please. Um, a, a lot of thought did go into um, into these recommendations and uh it has been addressed by like what dan is saying um there there has to be repercussions in these situations be and these are the ones that we have that we as a committee have collectively decided um are the most appropriate even if we were able to suspend pay i don't think it would have been an appropriate action based on the findings that we had um it, in the, the resolution also focuses, hyper focuses on restorative justice. And part of the restorative justice process is um, addressing the harm that has been done to an individual. And then the individual gives recommendations for how that, how the, the person who harmed them can be re reintegrated into the, the community that they were part of because there is no reason for us to to uh, as we've seen like there and nowhere in here in the recommendations is it we're getting rid of Alan the the repercussions for not following through with the the council's decision would then fall onto that so while the most that we could have done is like would be something like removal from the council or um or suspension of pay it, it didn't it didn't feel appropriate at all mm -hmm. to to do these things. So there was a lot of a lot of thought that went into um, into this. And we wanted to do it right. All right, Alex, is that a new hand, buddy? Oh, I think it is. Yeah, he's stacked. He okay. it, out. it is. Yeah, I, I I respect that. I do. I really do. Um, 
Uh, I just, it's really that one thing. It's just this one thing that I think might be problematic. Um, and I, we can vote on this. I don't want to drag this out. I just, yeah. I don't know. I, I think given the time that we live in, maybe understanding is the best thing to do instead of trying to reprimand or punish someone. And like, I agree with the classes. I think the classes are going to be fine. That'll be a really good thing. But the voting just seems problematic in theory. That's all I have. Thank you, Alex. I see a hand from Naomi. And a reminder, if you want yeah. to back, I'll get you. And we'll go to James after. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Alex, I just want to say that, like, I understand your perspective because, like, for so long, like, especially in my, you know, in the indigenous community, like we believe in rehabilitation rather than, you know, severe punishment. However, we do need to recognize that not, we need to recognize that consequences do need to happen. And for those consequences to happen, they need to be fulfilled out in a certain manner. So this person understands the severity of their actions. And I do understand that um, this education that they will be, you know, forced to go through will be something that is very rehabilitating to them. But that's not to say that, like, they're still going to keep up with their ways and just go to this class and be like, oh, well, I went to the class and I can still do whatever I want. Like, I go to half of my classes sometimes and don't hear a word the teacher says and continue off my life because it's all about memorization. It's the same concept. Somebody can go to these classes and say that they've learned them and just showed up and got a, sign a signature on it. But that doesn't mean they've necessarily learned anything. So this is a time of contemplation and reflection for them to really go back and look at like, hey, maybe I could have approached this in a different situation or, hey, maybe I could have considered this. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but this is the opportunity for that to happen. We have to at least present them with the opportunity to do this before we just give it back to them, because that's not rehabilitation. That's just letting them get away with the con or get it, letting them get away with the actions that they didn't think they have consequences to. And unfortunately, my people are sick and tired of seeing that happen. So, yeah. Go, Thank you, Naomi. Works. It's on uh, you, James, and then I want to cut in after. That's all right. Um, and if anyone else wants to come back. Uh, so actually, I think that's a point. Like, in the community, community the uh, kind of community has given you know, multiple recommendations, and you know there are different ones that have a different you know, strike on Alan's ability to vote. That you know, if someone doesn't like, they need to vote no. Or yes. at this point, I would like to call a question. Recommendation one. Second. Yes. Okay. All right. Does anybody opposed? I, I, I think there's more to be discussed, but that's me. Is anyone else opposed? If I'm alone, then I just all of those. I, I, all of those. I would like. I, I still want to talk just about vote, the I would voting say, thing. Voting no. So let's call the question. The uh, it's been seconded. Motion's been heard. There's some folks opposed. We'll go down the list. Uh, and this is on closing the debate, moving to vote on the recommendation. Alan. Uh, okay. Chad? No is continue discussion, correct? Yeah. No. Gotcha. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, Alex? No. Uh, Taylor? Yes. James? Yes. Mike? Yes. Three. Yes. Dan? Yes. Naomi? Yeah. And Gabe? Yes. All right. The ayes have it. Uh, we're calling the question. Uh, we're voting on the most severe. May I may I make a quick point of clarity? Sure. Um, we are going to be voting on Number one, and then if that passes by majority vote, then that is what will be enacted. We will not even address uh, uh, number two, three, four, or five. Um, and then if we get to a uh, uh, if we get to a situation where um, a clear winner in this situation has not been made, then the the uh, the recommendation that has the most votes. Will then be the, the recommendation are used okay sorry, that is used so if you are if you are leaning towards recommendation three you should be voting no, no. on one and two you should not be abstaining 
unless you completely disagree with the accountability committee's actions entirely. Okay. I, what would you think about everyone being able to vote multiple times? Or is that you just want one vote? One oh. person, one vote, one. Oh, we all vote on each one. Yes. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Sorry. I, I don't know. So yes, I got lost. Votes. Cool. I lost this off. So, so I'll say, um, are we going to, I just wanted to quickly fill out, are we going to forego discussion before each of these votes? Correct. Yeah. That's the front of it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, well, I, I'm asking that we don't go down. Um, all right. So, so here, here, no, no votes. One we'll move on. So, calling the question on the first item um, in the list of recommendations. If you don't need to point the most severe, let us know now. Um, Alan. Hey. Beth? No. Alex. Uh, Dean. Taylor? Yes. James? No. Mike? Yes. Bree? Yes. Dan? No. Naomi? Wait, point of clarification. We yeah. vote yes if we want one through two, no, three, no. four, and five, right? Yeah. So it would just be, it, you're, we're just voting on item one, recommendation one, yes or no, uh, and then we'll go for which one has the ha, has the clear clear majority vote. So uh, just on item one, the most severe, yes or no? Um, yes. All right, they can hear me. And Gabe? Yes. All right, and I'll vote yes. And looking at that, we have. That is. The ayes have it. All right. So the motion is adopted. Or, well, sorry, we're going to vote on others because there's going to be others. Um, no, no, there's not. You don't think there's a there might be a wider margin on some of the other ones? I don't like duty tank, but that's not what we came up with. I passed the majority. Oh, okay. I like the way that. Sorry if I. That. Yeah, I. I uh, that's truthful. Well, is that accurate, Chad? Chad? That's how I how I envision this. Is okay. There's a there's a majority that has been made on recommendation one, and there, there shouldn't be any voting on the other. All right. Part. All right. All right. So we're through with uh, item B of the agenda and C. Move on to item D. New co-chair interest slash nominations. Mike, the floor is yours. So um, this is an amendment I wrote. We back in the summer, but um, it is it is coming the time of year where we um, will accept nominations for two 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 different things here. So first would be the elections commissioner for our co-chairs. So um, we are holding our elections for co-chairs next week, and um, our current co-chairs will during that time will relinquish the power to the elections commissioner to conduct our elections. So this is a position. This is someone who is not running, cannot will cannot be running for co-chairs. So um, I think we should open the floor to nominations for this commission there to be appointed or by the council at large to oversee our elections for next week. Should we go into, sorry, I don't know. Oh, well, please, should we, should we know who is running before we decide? That's, you know, that's a good, <laughs> that no, might make sense. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, like, it's a long days. So you nominate yeah. TV. Yeah. I'll take it. Also, everybody, let's respect the floor. So let's, let, let's retry this again. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it. All right. So, so do you want right. me to get into Let me, it? let me just chair for a moment, please. <laughs> there, it's good. You're going I promise. Fine. I, I, I promise. Yes, Reed. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to discuss nominations for volunteers. Uh, please. The floor is now open. If you want to run as the election manager for our co-chair elections, this is someone who it will preclude no, I, you from. I thought we were going to, who wants to run first? Like, oh, well, you no, know, we're first. talking about the co-chair elect, the elections manager, right? The, the point they were making was like, do, should we have the nominee, nominees out first? So we, so it narrows up. The they can't because do people can also nominate others. Yeah. And if I nominate Mike, but then he ends up running, then I've wasted my time. Yes. Right. So we're going to, let's switch that around. Let's do the nominations for who wants to run for co-chair first, I think. Okay, Pretty so yeah, we can we can do it in whatever order. I don't think it's terribly. I see a hand from Marie. We'll recognize you, Marie. Can I nominate somebody? Uh, for what? The co-chair? Yeah. Okay, please. I would like to nominate Taylor Lucas. Taylor, do you accept the nomination? I do accept the nomination. Thank you, Marie. All right, door is still open for co-chair nominations. Do we have any volunteers, any nominees? Mike, Mike, thank you. I'm going to nominate 
nominate <clears throat> Chad Doge. You're so bad at saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gouge, you, okay, good. Chad, good. All righty. Does anyone else want to declare their, their candidacy? Uh, all right, James. Cool. So we have James. We have James, Taylor, Chad. Anybody else want to nominate and or volunteer? I will do one more nomination. I will nominate Dan Giles. Nomination for Dan. Dan, do you accept? <laughs> yes. Oh, I'll accept. Yeah. Cool. We have four nominees. That's pretty good. We'll we'll keep it going here until we we exhaust. Um, anyone else want to nominate or volunteer? Taylor. Um, I want to nominate two people. Um, they can totally say no. That's fine. Um, Re and Naomi. Nice. All right. So, Reed, Naomi, we'll start with Reed. Do you accept the nomination? I love you. I appreciate you, but no, thank you. No from Reed. Thank you, Reed. <laughs> you, Naomi, uh, nomination for co-chair. What do you think? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Not right now. Thank you, though. Hey, no problem, Naomi. Thank you for responding. Now, Alex, I see a hand in the chat. Uh, what do you got? Paul, could I uh, possibly nominate you? I've decided next semester to rejoin the the general council. So I uh, I thought yeah, that was the case. We're in a more more official state, so I'll decline. But it's been an honor, everyone. Oh. All right. Now, um, do we have any other nominations? I'm feeling I'm kind of tapping out. But any other nominations or volunteers? I nominate myself. All right. Oh, okay. That's Gabe. Cool. Cool. So just to make sure, well, Kenny got all the nominees there. Can I actually rescind my acceptance of my? Ex no, you have to run, and if you get elected, you have to be chair. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we, uh, so we rescind Dan's acceptance of the nomination. We'll have two completely new co-chairs like best in our next semester. So um, now, uh, with, unless there's any opposition, I think we should move into nominating the elections manager. So that we have a smooth process like we did last time, and a Mike did a good job, but essentially be doing what Mike did last time we did this. Uh, does anyone want to volunteer or nominate someone? Looking for hands and or all right, Chad. Well, me, Mike. Yeah. Ah, cool, cool. We have a nomination for Mike. Mike, do you accept? Sure, Mike. Cool. Mm -hmm. We got Mike on the table here. Anybody else want to make a nomination or volunteer? I'm gonna volunteer myself. Y'all know I'm a stickler for procedure, so I I'd make it run well. Let me promise you that. But uh, the nomination. I, I, and I accept my own nom my own voluntary nomination. No, um, but I also recognize that we have a, 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 a good election manager in Mike as well. So no hard feelings if you don't. Sorry. Right. We'll just do it together. Oh, it'd be a co. It'll be a co election. Oh. I think we'd have to we'd have to revisit the uh, the resolutions that we passed, but you know we could consider that. In the future, okay. in the future, I think it's a pretty kind of dry resolution. Okay. We we might want some power. They don't want the power, but I, mean, I think it's easier for one person just to get it through. Taylor, is there something you wanted to raise, like a motion or something? Oh, just a suggestion. Just I just want to make sure you didn't feel like snubbed. Okay, so there's two people on the phone. All there. right, so we have two people. Sounds like we have all our nominations. Um, Mike, I'm going to cede the floor back over to you for any other uh, closing remarks we might need to take for this. So um, the elections commissioner should be elected. Today, so they have a week to make the relevant materials that will be voted upon next week. <laughs> so that's what I would recommend next is that we figure out who's going to be elections commission. There's two options on the board. Can we vote on who should we have? Point of order, our mechanism for that vote is that a is that a, a team's poll? Are we doing that? I think a voice vote should be fine. Okay. Mike, or you go around down the round table. Who do you vote for, Mike or Paul, to be elections commissioner? Yeah, I think I'll All right, all. All right, yes, sir. Does anyone feel like we need to do a sign a secret ballot or anything like that? No, nope. just roll call. Okay, all right, then we'll just we'll call the question. We have a second on that. Second, seconded. Any opposed? Um, oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll run down. Through. Cool. Oh, so, okay, Alan. Wait, so are we voting on exactly? So we're yeah. going to be voting on uh, who you'd like. No, no, I don't know. That's right. You don't just oh, yeah. going to say something. You don't got to vote no more, buddy. Okay, right. Chad. Uh, Mike. Mike. Alex. A uh, point of clarification, what are you voting on? So we are voting on who you want to be the elections manager. So when someone calls on you, you say either Mike or Paul. Uh, no hard feelings if you don't say Paul. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Paul. We'll still be Paul, okay. Uh, Taylor. 
Paul, because Mike's doing too much already. That's right. Uh, Paul. Oh, uh, go for Paul. Smart. James. Paul. Mike. Uh, I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three. Um, um, Paul. Dan. Paul. Naomi. Paul, same as Taylor. <laughs> and Gabe. Paul, same as Taylor. <laughs> oh, Taylor. Okay, Paul. He's going to run the elections. Thank you for your willingness, Mike. Paul. Mike, congratulations. I was nominated, so I had to. Thank you all for your confidence. All right. All right, let's go on to E. James, your proposals has the floor. Uh, so I created a new amendment to the Constitution. Uh, I won't read the whole thing because it's been out for a week and well, five days at least. So hopefully you guys have had time to read it. Uh, so essentially what this will do, though, is we will be moving a public comment to early in the meeting um, and we will be giving a scheduled time to the public. So that way, instead of because as of right now, we have it at the end of each meeting. And unfortunately, our meetings never end at the exact same time. And so I think it would be it's, it's probably bad that we say, hey, we end at 430. So come around then for public comment. But then we got a meeting at 345. And so students are either coming in earlier or too late. Uh, so I think moving it up earlier and allowing them an actual scheduled time like, hey, 315 is when public comment starts. Please join us. Uh, the way this will work is let's say we do agree on 315 at 315. We will go into public comment. The chairs will announce and say anyone remember the public available want to speak. If someone's there, public speaks. If no one's there, then we continue our agenda. However, within that 15 minute period, anyone can join from the public and make themselves known. We allow them space to speak. And then at the end of the 15 minute period, we go right back into normal agenda work up until the end. Um, and then at the very end, just to ensure we got everyone that wants to speak, we do a last call for um, for public comment. This is just kind of like ending the meeting saying, Last call for public comments when we'll be heard. If not, we adjourn for the day. If so, we allow them to speak. I think I only allowed. I don't think I put a time limit. We can talk about if we want a time limit for that, um, or we just keep it the same as it's been for public comment in general. So that is the proposal. Five minutes per speaker. Is there a time limit on that? Five minutes per speaker. Can they speak twice? Can they speak? They speak at the first fifteen minutes and they stay the whole meeting and speak a second time. I'm going specifically just based off of like how our public comment works right now. I don't care what we allow us to be comments. I can't remember. So we just said we have a total of just for clarification, we have a total of five, I believe, per speaker. Okay. So you could go up as many times as long as you want to hit five minutes. Okay. Like, yeah, I guess yeah. if they really want to speak again at the end, if we're not opposed to it, we're not opposed to it, so you can allow it. I saw some of my peripherals over here. Do you have a hand question? Go ahead, Taylor. Um, in my perspective, I think three o'clock would be a better time. And if no one is there, it could also double as what Chad eloquently called earlier the PP break. Uh, <laughs> so, like, as we're another, we don't, we're not scheduling a time with this. The only reason why is because I know I realized that next year, the next council could have completely different times than us. True. So, this will pass, and then the council will be the ones to decide the time. But I, I get what you mean. Uh, this just allows for future councils to decide whatever time, especially if they meet on. Tuesdays from like five to seven for some crazy reason. It, and I, was yeah. speak to speak. I wanted to just reflect. I, I like this idea um, and I think it reflects us being like adaptive as we go on. So we've begun our term and we find out, you know, we don't have as much public comment as we could as people are coming and when people do come, they're frustrated at how long they have to wait. And so this is us adapting to new information, not just doing things the same old way. And I think that if we do this change, and I really do like the way this is written, uh, it encourages that kind of approach for next year's student government. So that say they find that it might work better if they do it at a different time, you know, they'll say, oh, like the old one, we can reflect on what's happening and then change to merit the situation. Work. So I uh, want to give this my full support. I really like it. So more public comment, but. Just any quick clarification for anyone who may get confused. Uh, clauses seven and eight remain the same. We just remove the public comment from it. Uh, those just cover how we extend meetings um, in case we still have that issue uh, as far as public comment from those clauses. Does anyone else have any questions or anything to contribute to discussion, comments, <laughs> opposition even? Run it out there. Is anyone online going twice for comments on what James has spoke to us about? Go ahead, Gabe. Not like 
just a quick comment. So if this does get passed, then we're voting for the time today, right? Yeah, we can vote for time. Okay, because I think we should vote for like which time we choose as a council day, also One, okay. if it gets passed. Like that, I hear that. Okay, any more discussion of opposition? Well, point of clarification: Does it say a specific time right now, or is it just a place in the in in, in as, the agenda? As long as it's earlier in the agenda, then it's okay. Or then, yeah. Uh, I mean, if we really want to, we can push it to four. I would really highly recommend us doing it as early as possible, just to ensure you know. Because I don't know if we get out at three forty-five. So I'm just saying, let's put it as early as possible. So um, wherever we see fit. Alex doesn't stand up as well. Thank you. Alex. I would also like to echo what James is saying, and I think that the public comment would best be served at the 2.30 hour, um, given that's when the meeting starts and we serve students. And I think that would be the ideal time. I I unite with that. I hear some other unity in the room. We. Um, I want to propose a friendly amendment that we uh, solidify a place for it. Um, you know, before updates, after the approval of the agenda, just you know, at the beginning, and then we continue on with that notion that we again have some space for it at the very end for folks that do just come at the regular time. So um, would that be a friendly amendment? Can I get if that's time. my slot again? So it wouldn't be a specific time slot. We could still iron that out after we vote on this. But this friendly amendment would say that. We put it right after the approval of the agenda, so it would be ahead of the round table updates. Yes. The only reason, yeah, I, I don't mind. The only reason I didn't do that was because I didn't know how we would have shipped it. But if do you think that's friendly, think that's friendly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you, Alex, for that. Kenny, could you write that in there? So at the instead of um, at an earlier occur early in the agenda, say occur after the approval of the agenda, so before the round table. So I'm checking that one. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, and then I'm, I'm going to motion yes. to call the, call the question. Second. All right. Is anyone opposed to closing debate on this and voting on it? All right. Why? Okay. Beautiful. All right. All the floor. Yeah. God. Yes. Alex. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Paul. Yes. James. Yes. Mike. Bree. Aye. Naomi. Gabe. Yes. Yes. Naomi. Yes. Dan. Yes. All right. Council. The amendment unanimously passes. Two more to go. <laughs> So we'll move now on to the amendment proposal that Chad has for us, item F. Chad, go ahead. The floor is now yours. Oh, do I get to share this one? Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, so I hope everybody was able to read this one as well. Uh, it's pretty, pretty short uh, item. Um, the whole idea behind this is uh, anybody who has the power to facilitate the meeting currently, it's the co-chairs, but I worded it in a, in a vague way where should there be a different amendment that that removes that power and gives it to somebody else. Anyways, um, the uh, anyone who is presenting a resolution or an amendment that also has the power to facilitate the meeting will forfeit that power to facilitate them that specific item in the agenda until they move on to the next item of business. So this includes anybody who like, let's say, for example, if Dan was bringing a, uh, a resolution or amendment or to the to the council. If he was a writer, a collaborator or a uh, writer, collaborator or endorser, he would not be able to uh, to facilitate the meeting for that item. This is to uh, steer away from uh, the potential for discussion to be um, led in a specific direction that could be considered favorable for the resolution or the amendment. Are there any questions on this? So we'll open up first, I guess, to discussion. Is anyone opposed? Is there any opposition to the notion? Alex, so I'm opposed. Okay, go ahead. 
I think if we do this, we're taking away the flattened governance. Um, it's a functional issue to me. Nothing personal. Um, facilitating a meeting is important, right? So I think if ideally we write a resolution, we should all be on that paperwork, okay? But stripping away the, the ability to facilitate, facilitate a meeting is, it just doesn't seem very functional. Well, go ahead and respond there. Chris. So the, the idea is that we would be transferring that ability to facilitate the meeting to a different counselor. And I think that this actually aids the, uh, the, the shared governance uh, and the flat structure that we, that we are striving for personally. Um, and I also did put in here at the very end, if there is no available uh, facilitator after the criterion is met, the facilitator will be a counselor that has not written the proposed resolution or amendment. So in that same vein that if Dan already does have the power to facilitate the meeting, but wasn't a writer and just a collaborator or an endorser, then he would it would go back to him to be able to facilitate the meeting. So in that situation, because if let's say the entire council's name is on an amendment or resolution, then what do we do? And that's where this is like. So it defaults back to the chair, the yes. co-chair to do. Okay. Okay. You had some? Oh yeah. I just like also agree with Chad with this. I don't think it moves us away from flat structure, but instead moves us closer to a more flatter structure. Um, so therefore the same person who has a resolution is not leaving the meeting within the resolution as well. So they get, it's not taken away forever. It's just taken away temporarily. So then we're all more on an equal level when presenting a resolution. Thank you, Gabe. Thanks. Um, Alex. Is, so Alex, Alex. Alex, is that a new hand? It's a new hand. Okay. Uh, I agree. I think um, there can be bias if someone has written a resolution and they also you know, chair the meetings and like we've talked about how in theory the flattened governments would work. I just, I'm just trying to, I, I know the devil's in the details, but I'm trying to just be careful with how we do this. Uh, now, I agree. I just wonder who, okay, let's say it's just one person's name on a resolution and maybe they're the chair. What, where does that go to next? You know, like who's gonna facilitate the meeting, the meetings after that? Like, um, yes, please, Chad, go ahead. No, so, I mean that's the entire article that this would go. That um, uh, let's see, um, the power to, the power to facilitate and maintain parliamentary order will then go to in order the other co-chair of SGT SAC or any counselor who volunteers. Okay. 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 Cool. 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 I got it. I'm gonna get it. Uh, so I I oppose this as written. I don't oppose the sentiment of wanting to reduce the possibility of abuse of like the use of the facilitation to like pass an agenda. But I do agree with the sentiment that this uh this digs at the notion of uh of flattened governance and that um, if you were a person who writes. Uh, resolutions, or maybe a lot of resolutions, participates in a lot of writing. Uh, I've done a lot of those. I almost feel like it would, uh, like, should should we, uh, this is, is, is taking the ability to facilitate away from a member simply because they write a resolution, the best way we can approach that notion of maintaining, like, fair facilitation? Or would it lead to, like, um, and I have a more of a rhetorical, but I have, um, me. Sorry, I lost my turn of thought there, but I, um, goodness, sorry, T Taylor, did you have a question or something? Mm -hmm. My bad. Um, I just see it as it's aiding the flattened structure. It, it may be taking away the ability to lead the meeting for like a few minutes from the chair, but it's giving it to someone on the council, so it's sharing that power. So I, that's why I like it. I appreciate the feedback on that and the question. Um, and it helps kind of jog my memory as to what else I want to say on it. Uh, I, I, I do think that when it comes to facilitating a meeting, it is worthwhile to have the person do it for the duration of a semester. 
right? And in special instances, we uh, we change that so that like an elections manager or something like that can facilitate the floor uh, and take part in like uh, like the assigning of the floor to somebody at, at a particular time or the recognition of motions. Um, but I also fear that like we're we're talking about musical chairs of facilitators, and I just I feel like we have a lot of moving parts here and that we'd be on a much shakier foundation than we're already on when it comes to like running an orderly meeting where people don't get lost in the weeds or confused about what's being done, what's being voted on. I feel like this could complicate things to a degree that would be more detrimental to the work than beneficial. And so I might just in, end with this thought that I would encourage um, that we revisit the, the drafting table on this in a way that would um, address like uh, just potential unforeseen consequences of, 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 of doing this, I think. Uh, that's all I have to say on it. You know, I don't want to talk too much before here. Any other thoughts on it? People who are in favor want to talk about it? It's not like a new thing either. Um, last year, it was not just the chairs who led the meetings. Um, for instance, Jeremy, before he was chair, he led a few meetings. X led a few meetings without ever being chair. So it's it's a power that the chairs have, but it's not theirs exclusively. If anyone wants to at any time, I think anyone's going to be. Hey, uh, let's kind of say to uh, Alex's comment, no one is forced to be the facilitator. It's purely voluntarily. So, I mean, let's say you wrote an amendment resolution. You would then yield your facilitation powers temporarily to Dan. And Dan would just be currently sole chair for that, you know, that time frame. Uh, let's say you and Dan were both on that document. Anyone in this room could volunteer just to temporarily volunteer and they would become facilitator. You're not becoming chair, you're just becoming the facilitator of the meeting for however long it takes us to get through the, that, you know, that process. Thanks, James. Go ahead, Dan. What if nine but if nine people volunteered, would we have to make a vote on then that? That is a chair. What do you think, Joe? Why would nine people volunteer? Good question. Right now, zero people have volunteered except you two to be the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I was just any other any other thoughts or okay. It's, it's a good idea. Hypothetical, yeah. <laughs> we'll it was a good question. We'll reopen the floor for discussion. Uh, anybody else want to get back in? James, I saw a hand. I'm not cool. what you're saying. I was going to say, if there's no more discussion, I'd like to call a question. All right, so there's a the motion. The chair recognizes the motion and the second. All right, so the motion is recognized. Is anyone opposed to the closing discussion? Moving on to the, the voting. Going twice online. I hear none. We'll go ahead and call the roll. All right, and this is again voting on Chad's amendment to uh, sorry here did it uh, to make this change in facilitation for authorship of resolutions, etc. Here, and so uh, we'll start. Uh, Chad, yes. Alex, yes. Taylor, yes. James, yes. Mike, yes. Bree? Aye. D Dan? No. Naomi? Gabe? Yes. And Naomi? All right. We'll have, I'll vote no. Well, yeah, so and then we'll see one more time, Naomi. Thank you, counselors. Did you have a vote there, Naomi? Unmuting. Okay. All okay. right. Thank so you. The amendment passes. Thank you, Council. Great. On to the next uh, item in the agenda. That'll be item G. Member proposal being brought to the floor by Mike. Go ahead, Mike. You have. Oh. I like to, I like to say I take after my, one of my mentors, Dr. Perron, by taking on way too many things. Um, but we'll continue on with it. So. Um, this is a amendment. I have uh, amendment to the constitution. Um, it is going to it's going to completely replace our current committee section in the in the constitution. It ex 
expands it. It does a few things. So I mean, I'm just going to read through it because it's, it's it's kind of extensive. Uh, creations of the mandate is meant to accomplish a few th following: mandate a constitutional structure throughout SGT SAC committees, add accountability throughout SGT SAC, mandate that essential day-to-day -day tasks or day-to-day -day functions of SGT SAC are maintained, maintain that SGT SAC commitments, past, present, and um, past and present, are maintained. Um, reformat the roundtable section in the SGT SAC agenda uh, and replace, like I said, replace the section um, that's in there currently. So the amendment kind of looks as follows. Are you? Um, so um, basically, section one, SGT SAC has two executive boards and two different types of committees. The executive boards are going to be SACA and the trustee. So in looking at the agenda, when we do the roundtable, the boards will be first um, on the agenda. Secondly, it will be standing committees. So standing committees, um, I wrote in there to be required to be filled at the beginning of each new term of SGT SEC. Um, and with the passing of this amendment, um, there needs to be a structuring governing document attached to each committee each year. And that would be up to the chairs of the following standing committees to write. Um, and to change this governing, each of these documents are kind of are part of the constitution. So when they have to be voted in with two thirds of a vote, that it's how this committee will be structured. Um, and then a chair at the beginning of your must be elected into these to facilitate. Um, just kind of, this is as we're currently, but um, committees have no power outside full meetings. This is just to make sure day to day, day, -to -day gets done and assign some assignments to each um, committee. So with that, um, the following committees will be made into standing committees. And assign the following tasks. So, first is the SGT SEC budget committee. They are required to compile and maintain the budget, report SGT SEC budget to the SAB board, manage and maintain the following funding sources, not included but not limited to student organization, organization funds, green purchasing funds, and budget committee small allocations funds. The second committee that's going to be a standing committee is the SGT SEC sustainability committee. Um, they're required to manage and maintain the green purchasing agreement Canvas course. Point of contact for purchasing agreements to organization funds, setting out and maintaining the water coolers that are currently in our office, and any other green, sustainable climate projects and ideas there will be required to do or to um, man up. And then the public relations committee, um, they are um, going to be managing and maintaining all SGT SAC social media profiles, um, to be required to, managing and planning the TSAC sponsored events. Uh, managing and maintaining the websites and creating news releases from media and any other organizations. And then lastly, make sure sunshine laws will are being met. So um, that is the second type of, that's the first type of committee we have. The second one will be an advisory committee. So that's basically every other committee that I did not mention out of those three. Um, rules, are, oops, rules are generally kind of similar, um, but to create an advisory committee, it only needs a majority vote. Um, and um, that's kind of it. I mean, they just need a majority vote and a representative for that committee. Um, so that'd be culture updates, that'd be government documents committee, that would be a CSGC, that would be public uh, policy advisory committee, faculty student affairs committee, COVID response, student travel committee, indigenous student resource committee, the new committee for council goals, advisor updates, and accountability committee. So that is the end of the resolution. That's what would be changed in our current constitution. Thank you, Mike. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open up the floor for discussion. We'll hear first from opposition, or if anyone has any clarifying questions, go ahead, Taylor. Um, this is like, for me, I don't, I think it's a little bit too much for each committee to have its own constitution, but I think a mission statement would be more appropriate. Yeah, I mean, just a document that can, is that, that's yeah. fine. It is, it's, as long as it's voted upon by the council. Has to be voted on by the council. It's like their own documents, not constitution necessarily, but suggesting a friendly amendment there, Taylor. Yeah. So it says uh, governing mission mission statement. Governing and mission statement. Governing governing mission statement. Sure. That's okay. friendly. Cool. Let's get that uh, changed in there. Thank you. Appreciate you, Kenny. Um, any other thoughts? Opposition amendments. Alex. Is <laughs> oh, Alex. Thank you for pointing that out, Mike. I, I just feel like this is extra work for no reason. Can I respond to that? So extra work for no reason. This is making sure work gets done. There's currently, we have a lot of things that need to get done this council that are not mandated any sort of way. And this is the reason I wrote this amendment is to make sure things do get done on this council. That's the reason. I don't think it's extra work. It's work that's being done by, to be honest, majority of very few people on this council that could be spread out, but I mean, this is work that needs to be done on a day-to-day. -day. 
So that's that's the reason. That's my response to that. Thank you, Mike. We'll hear from Marie and then we'll go back to you, Taylor. If anyone else wants to get the stack, just let me know. So I'll get you in there. So go ahead, Marie. Hi, I am wondering if we want to at the top of this talk about what you expect from the membership as far as involvement. I mean, must we be involved then in one standing committee at least? Or how many advisory committees or, you know, something like that. So we have something to um, aim for and be responsible for. Okay. We'll let Mike respond before we go to Taylor. Go ahead, Mike. I think that is so in my mind, this is the structure in place. I think at some point there needs to be a broader accountability structure to put in place to like, hey, you're required to be on one of these standing committees and two of these advisory committees. Because I think our accountability system is right now very poor. And I think like a minority of the counselors doing the majority of the work. So um, I think that needs to be in a broader amendment um, to accountability at some points. Um, but um, I just, I think once a bit time, I'm putting, I'm putting up structures of the mind, then we start. So we hear you, Mike. Go ahead, Taylor. This is unrelated. We have 10 minutes left in the meeting, so I'm motioning that we extend it by 15 minutes. All right, we have a motion on, uh, to extend it second by 15. Time. Seconded. Motion on the floor to extend the meeting by 15 minutes. Uh, we'll go by. Is anyone opposed? All right. And you know, I'm not opposed to extending the meeting by 15 minutes past our usual end time. We need room for public comment. Give room for public comment. All right. I'm so, to table this till next week. What table the the motion to? Oh, go ahead. No, this thing that we're talking about. Oh, okay. Uh, we have another motion. Um, it's shot. Sorry, remind me of the last motion. We were, we're talking about extending, extending the meeting. meeting. Thank you. Sorry, there's a lot of moving parts, like I was saying. Uh, so, uh, extending the meeting sounds like the eyes have it. We'll go ahead. We'll extend the meeting by 15 minutes. Um, you know, uh, all right. <clears throat> so, uh, continuing discussion on this. Sorry, Gabe. Sorry, Dan. Um, anybody else have thoughts on this particular amendment? To our constitution? Online. I wanted to say something. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll say that uh, I really I do like this, and I agree with Mike when he's talking about uh, the kind of disproportionate work being done in the council. Um, and I think this is an instance of where we need to you know question if what we're doing is working, and if what we're doing is sustainable. Like, do, are we are we uh, you know. Uh, Creating, co creating a, a, a student government where we can have student leaders succeed, or are we doing that where we have some burnout, right? And I think that if we take a look at accountability, we can do so in a way that makes sure that this is a place that everybody can succeed in and not necessarily feel like they're pulling more weight than, than, than anyone else. And, uh, but yeah, so I, I unite with a lot of, and I, and I think this amendment is a, is a move in that direction. Um, and I agree that there's greater, greater degree of accountability. So I guess. Um, Alex, I see your hand back up. Go ahead. I just, I, I, I also respect it. I think that's good. Um, accountability is going to be difficult in a flattened government structure. Uh, we are living this experiment out, right? Um, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Hey, we hear you, Alex. All right, go ahead, James. Floor is yours. I just I think it's good because you know the, there are certain committees that we we do need to make sure are more being fulfilled and worked on. Some of the committees that we have um, may not seem as important to others, but to our actual governments, some of them are really important that they need to be done. So I, I agree that the standing committees need to exist. As far as forcing, um, I know this is for a completely later amendment, forcing people into. Um, Different committees that I'll be willing to work on, on that with people. I just know that right now we have it to where it's open and you're going to be in and out. But I do believe and agree with Mike that, you know, we are all elected. We're all being paid by the students. So we need to show that we are earning that we can't just be getting a paycheck. Um, so I, I agree for the most part that this is something we need. So Mike, looks like, looks like you have a response and then we'll take you again, Alex, if you got a new hand there. <laughs> Just to add on to it, like so, like it's not a new hand. Drawing back to my work in CMEI, um, if we like something like a past commit, like the green purchasing agreements, something that this council did not vote upon, 
but that is a past commitment that the, the TSEC has made. Well, it will it's maintained through the system. So um, that's kind of why I like sustainability is there. They're required to maintain that past commitments. Um, so that's just kind of an, an uh, whatever. <laughs> Go ahead. Kind of made me think about something too. I, and I, I think honestly, I wouldn't think to say, oh, this is perfect. Right, yeah. it's the perfect resolution. It accounts for everything and anything that could go wrong. Yeah. But we shouldn't let like uh, perfect be the enemy of good here. Uh, and this is a good resolution. And whatever problems that there might be in it, we can encounter them. And when we do, we can course correct and yeah. like, adapt and overcome. Uh, and so I would, you know, kind of feeling the discussion patter out a little bit here. I would motion to call the question. Um, this particular proposal. We have a second. Um, is anyone opposed to closing discussion? Yes. I second. All right, so we have a third. Okay. Anyone opposed to? All right. As the second one, so we'll go ahead and call the question on this uh, particular item. Yes, and we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, hopefully, it's back in time. Um, so this is on the resolution that uh, the amendment proposal that Mike has just presented us with. Uh, we'll start with. Uh, chat. Yes. All right, Alex. Yes. Taylor. Yes. All right, James. Yes. Mark. Yes. Reed. Hi. Dan, we're voting on Mike's proposal to the standing committees. Uh, do you apply? Henry, you'd said I, right? Yes. Okay. I did, yeah. Thank you for the clarification. And Naomi? Guys, oh, sorry. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. Um, yeah, the answer is yeah. I vote yes. Sorry. No problem at all. Gabe? I. And I will vote yes as well. You guys have it. The motion passes unanimously. Good job, Council. That will bring us into our public comment period. If you're a member of the comment, please make yourself known. We'll take you down. We'll make sure you have five minutes to speak. Uh, the floor will be yours. Please, if you're online, put your name in the chat. If you're in person, give us a wave or something. So this uh, the public comment. Go ahead. Anybody online? Yes, yeah, so we have Joe. I don't see anybody online. So we have Jody here. Uh, feel free. The floor is yours. Okay, so I would like to is the right word proposed um, to um, change the CMEI or student orgs um, when registering for clubs instead of having the president, vice president, president, secretary, treasurer, like that standard to kind of like have just make our own type of um, officer positions, kind of like modeling the SGT SAC, um, everybody's equal has since. I'm mostly involved with engineering clubs. I believe that if a student who is also working, who um, wants to run for president for a, an engineering club and is also majoring in engineering, the president position is just too much. So I think like having an equal position would be um, mo most sustainable for like a person or efficient in that case. Um, and, uh, you know, if there are other clubs that want to fill in or write down the standard president, vice president, et cetera, type of thing, um, then they're free to do so. But I guess um, the thing that I just want to say is that, like, can you switch the Roadrunner link website to, like, instead of having the standard cu um, custom standard type of thing, you could just type down, this person is going to be doing um, the outreach stuff. Or like competitions. So, thank you, Jenny. Thanks, Jody. Uh, we'll we'll field. Uh, and yeah, thank you for your public comment. We'll field from any other members of the public. Uh, so going going once, folks online, going twice. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I do want to give my I saw some hands and stuff. If anyone wanted to give Jody some feedback or thoughts on on, on this good idea. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, just a comment. So, um, what I believe you're referring to is make it so, like, um, you make it so you can basically add a representative. You don't have to have a, like a president or like a treasurer, but you can have like a, a representative instead. Because hey, we this club here 
perhaps it's your governance. Mm -hmm. um, so based on the representative or like our out coordinator for officer. this, is that what you want? Officer, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. and you know, can I just, it cannot just also have like only one representative. There can also be like the standard for at, at least four officers. But it's just a suggestion. True. I want to get in on that too. Jody, I, I think it's a really good suggestion. It's something that I've heard torn out from fellow members of my clubs where the that structure just does not apply to particular types of clubs. You know, um, especially when clubs have a more flattened structure or are alternative to that president, vice president, secretary, treasurer model that's kind of restricted. So I'd like to work with folks to see if we can make that happen. And uh, yeah, thank you for being a member of the public to comment. Um, with hearing from no other members of the public, there's a motion to adjourn. Second. And so anyone opposed? All right, we'll go ahead and move to adjourn for our resolution of our comments. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you, guys. I love you. Go home safely, everybody. Bye, y'all.